If you're watching this video, you likely have an infant in the hospital that may need supplementation or additional milk. We would like to share with you a recent discussion on this topic. The Minnesota Breastfeeding Coalition, local medical experts, Brighter Health MN, and local Islamic scholars met to give guidance to Muslim families on the use of pasteurized donor human milk. Now, for preterm infants, in those are the children that are born less than 37 weeks, in addition to all of above, there's more specific interest. It helps decrease infection. So these babies, when they're born, usually less than 35 weeks, they're admitted into the neonatal intensive care units. And now in our units, we take care of babies that are born as early as 22 weeks. So very, very immature, very young babies, as you can see in the picture. So um, human milk helps decrease, and I'm, right now I'm specifically talking about mom's milk, but I will go into how d donor milk also helps with that. So we, um, mom's milk helps decrease sepsis or infection throughout the baby's day, and it helps decrease a very bad disease that happens in the gut. It's called necrotizing enterocolitis. I'm gonna talk about it next slide, and I apologize in advance, I am gonna show a picture that is pretty ugly, but I think we need to see why it's important to have it in preterm infants. It also, in preterm infants, it's even more important for neurodevelopment or brain development, and it has been directly related, like every, amount of mom's milk that the baby receives in the NICU is correlated by improved cognition at three years of age. And then they got imaging MRI studies and they saw that the brain volume itself was bigger. And it's dose related. The more mom's milk, the better improvement in cognition and in brain development. So this is, again, I apologize about this picture, but this is what necrotizing enterocolitis is. This is, um, a very common, it's the most common gastrointestinal emergency, and it's devastating in the preterm infant. These babies are getting, like the first week, they're very sick, but then they got better, they get better, but by two or three weeks, they suddenly have this really bad disease where their belly blows up, and their gut is, gets very inflamed, and it's a very serious illness, about five to 10% and when they get that, 30% of them are gonna die. Like 30 to 50% in some places. And those that don't, and they die and receive surgery, they have problems long term. I had a baby that was born at about 25 weeks, was doing very well, and by three weeks, and, and the, we looked at the brain, how it's doing, and the brain looked good. By three weeks, it suddenly developed this necrotizing enterocolitis. It did survive, but she was there for months on the ventilator. And when we looked at her imaging again, the brain had a lot of cystic lesions. It looked like Swiss cheese. And that maybe two years later, her head to size was very small. She couldn't walk, she couldn't talk. So it's an acute inflammation, not just of the gut, but of the whole body that affects, that can affect the preterm baby lifelong. They can, if they have surgery, they can have short gut. It can have neurodevelopmental impairment. That means they can have cerebral palsy and delay. So it's a very, very bad disease. When you see a child, you remember it for, your, for a lifetime. So one of the things about um, what we do is pool the milk, is what uh, Dr. Vaheen brought up earlier. Um, and what that involves is we take three to five donors, uh, at least three to five, sometimes more, um, and combine their milk into what uh, we call a pool after it's been thawed, it will be put into these pots and strained um, and then mixed thoroughly. Um, once that happens, then it is bottled and sealed. Uh, the pooling part of it um, is needed uh, because of the variability we see uh, amongst uh, individual donors or between individual donors, um, particularly in the nutrient content. Uh, one a donor's milk can uh, vary anywhere between 50 and 30 15 and 30 uh, calories per ounce. Uh, when we pool it, we reduce that to about 20 calories an ounce um, and standardize that milk. We also have a nutrition analyzer in our laboratories uh, to allow us to be able to actually measure the content, the caloric content of that milk. And we do see it. We see a great variability between, uh, amongst the uh, mom's milk. 
Um, so we want to make sure that what the babies get in the NICU is consistent um, and at an appropriate level for them so that they can grow. At the center of all of these conversations is the baby yes. and their family. Yes. Yes. So I really, really respect all of us Thank and all of you yes. for engaging in this conversation. Thank then I think also that this is medicinal. Mm -hmm. It is medicinal and nutritional. The group discussed all the benefits of donor breast milk, the pasteurization process, and the current recommendations in the Quran, as well as other Islamic literature on this topic. The scholars responded with this. بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَالْوَالِدَاتُ يُرْضِعْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنَّ حَوْلَيْنِ كَامِلَيْنِ لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَيُّتِمْ مَرَّ ضَاعَةَ وَعَلَى الْمُولُودِ اللَّهُ رِزْغُهُنَّ وَكِزْوَتُهُنَّ وَكِزْوَتُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ لَا تُكَلَّفُ نَفْسٌ إِلَّا وُصَّهَا لَا تُضَارَّ وَالِدَةٌ بِوَلَدِهَا وَلَا مَوْلُودٌ لَهُ بِوَلَدِهِ وَعَلَى الْوَارِثِ مِثْلُ ذَلِكَ فَإِنْ أَرَادَ فِصَالًا عَنْ تَرَاضٍ مِّنْهُمَا وَتَشَاوُرٍ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فلا جناح عليهما وإن أردتم أن تسترضعوا أولادكم وإن أردتم أن تسترضعوا أولادكم فلا جناح عليكم إذا سلمتم ما آتيتم بالمعروف واتقوا الله واعلموا أن الله بما تعمرون بصير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته after our meeting with the doctors and experts on feeding, we sat together as a large group to discuss and look for clarity in the Quran and Hadith on this topic. We found the following factors to be very important in helping us make our ruling. Milk sharing is regarded as virtue in Islam. Breastfeeding is strongly encouraged and many verses in the Quran emphasize this. For example, Surah Al-Aqaf, Ayah 46 states, And we enjoin upon man to his parents' good treatment. His mother carried him with hardship and gave birth to him with hardship. And his gestation and winning period is 30 months. This emphasizes that for a mother to breastfeed her child is considered a very virtuous act. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 233, Allah says, Mothers should suckle their children for two years for one who wants to complete the period of suckling. There are many hadiths that discuss the minimum number of suckling necessary to establish the milk kingship. The Shafi'i school of maintained that the minimum number was five, as required to establish the marriage ban. In milk banks across the country, we learned that this breast milk is bullied from three to four, actually three to five donors. This makes it less likely that a baby will be fed a large amount from one donor. In addition, there is a legal prohibition for disclosing the identity of milk donors that is applied in the milk banks. These factors decrease the likelihood of establishment of kingship because it's impossible for families like yours identify one person as the wet nurse. Lastly, for some babies, who human breast milk services therapeutic medical purposes and it's preventing dangerous illness from the forming in the baby's digestive system. According to the Fatwa Committee's decision, regardless of donors' re religious beliefs, the use of heat-treated donor milk for that specific reason aligns with the Islamic Sharia's law goals which prioritize the preservation of human life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 32, whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. 
after much consideration, we have ruled that the benefits of pasteurized donor human breast milk are such that all babies, particularly preterm, low breath weight, and ill babies should be given this milk when that of their own mother is not available.